You know when you complete something that you just weren't completely satisfied with? Well that's how it is with my first Copper John video. I plan to remedy that with this video. That's me, Lance. I'm the creator of this channel and your normal average everyday guy who loves to tie flies. And today I'm going to tie a Copper John, my go-to fly pattern. Be sure to watch the whole video, because near the end, I give three tips on what I think will make tying this fly less challenging. If you are new to my channel, click subscribe and hit the bell to stay notified when I upload new content. That's me, and this is my vice. The hook used for this Copper John is a size 16 TMC 5262. It has a 764 inch bead on it. To start the Copper John, I am wrapping about a dozen wraps of .015 lead wire around the hook shank. Using my fingernails, I break the two tags of lead wire. I can jam it into the back side of the bead. I'm starting the thread behind the bead on top of the lead. I don't wrap too tight because wrapping the thread around the lead wire too tightly will cause the wraps of thread to separate. So I apply gentle wraps of thread to the shank until the thread reaches just behind the lead wire. Now that I'm past the lead wire, I tightly wrap the thread around the hook shank to the bend of the hook. The goose bite tail needs to be a half shank length long. To help splay the bites, I create a small thread bump at the bend of the hook shank. Grabbing a strip of biots, I fold them open and grasp two of the biots and gently pull them off the stem and split those two biots as well. The biot should sit splayed on the shank, like so, after they are tied in. Here I'll take a goose biot and tie it in just in front of the thread bump. As I tie the outside biot in, I make sure the tip of the biot is pointed out from the center of the hook. I'm wrapping a couple wraps of thread around the biot and shank of the hook to allow for easier adjustment of the biot. I adjust the biot so the tip is in line with the hook. Then I'll wrap a couple more wraps of thread around the hook shank by bringing the thread over the hook and biot and then tightening the thread as it comes back towards me. I am repeating this process for the other goose biot. Remember to keep the biot in line with the shank and the point of the biot pointed away from the center of the shank and even with the other biot. Once the biots are secured in place, I'm going to cut the butts from them by pulling on the butt of one biot and then using my scissors. I cut the butt as close to the shank as possible without cutting the thread. I then repeat this for the opposite side. My thread should be hanging from the fly just behind the lead wire. Here is where I'll take some copper brassy altar wire and holding the tip against the lead, I wrap the thread around it and the hook. Keeping the wire on the near side of the hook shank, I continue securing the wire to the shank with thread to the bend of the hook. Using flat wraps of thread, I wrap the thread to behind the lead wire and then back down the shank to about the 90% point of the hook and bring it back to behind the lead wire. I need to do this again, but this time only wrap to the 80% point of the hook and then to the 70% point. I'll repeat this process until the accumulated thread is level with the wrapped lead wire. Now I continue the tapering process along the whole length of the fly until I have a nice smooth taper on the fly. After I have completed my taper, I'll throw a half hitch with the thread onto the fly and use the rotary function on my vise to wrap the wire up the hook shank. As I rotate the jaws of my vise, I pull the copper wire towards the back of the fly and guide the wire so that it rolls off the previous wrap of copper wire. Once the wire has been wrapped to a bit behind the bead, I tie the wire with a couple wraps of thread. I then cinch down the thread and helicopter the wire until it breaks away from the fly. Next I place a piece of medium pearl tinsel on top of the exposed thread and use a couple light wraps of thread to hold it in place. Then carefully I pull the tinsel from behind the bead until the tip has fallen right behind the bead.
After I cinch down on the thread, I continue to secure the thread in place with a couple more wraps of thread. The next material I need for the wing case is a piece of thin skin that is about half the hook gape wide. The process to tie in the thin skin is the same as tying in the tinsel. After I select and trim three strands of peacock curl, I bring the thread to the back of the thorax and place the hurl on top of the exposed thread so that the tips are just behind the bead. Then I tie the hurl down with nice tight wraps of thread. Keeping the strands of hurl bundled, pull them straight up from the hook shank and wrap them around the hook to create a thorax. Next, I tie off the hurl and trim the butts. To create the legs of the copper john, I'll prepare a soft tackle hen saddle by taking one of the feathers and stripping the fluff from the fly. I then straighten the fibers from the stem, pinch a couple dozen fibers, and pull them off the stem of the feather. I take the bundled saddle fibers and hold them to the side of the fly, and line up the tips with the point of the fly. Then I pinch the bundle against the fly and cinch them in place with a couple tight wraps of thread. After the legs are seated properly, I'll trim the butt ends off the fly. I tie in the second set of legs the same way as the first set, but on the opposite side of the fly. To finish up the wing case, pull the thin skin over the top of the thorax and secure it to the fly so that it sits straight over the shank. Once secured, I pull and cut the excess thin skin. Now I'll repeat this process with the tinsel to complete this part of the thorax. Now I'll put a couple more wraps of thread on the fly to lock everything in place and whip finish it. After whip finishing the fly, I apply a bit of thick clear cure goo to the top of the thorax with my bodkin. I'm using my glue covered bodkin to completely cover the thin skin and create a small bubble of glue on top of the thorax. Then I'll blast the copper john with my UV light.
Now I apply a thin coat of clear cure goo hydro to the fly with my bog and blast it once again. And that's a copper john. The copper john is my go-to pattern for most fish. What is yours? Tell me in the comments below. Remember how I told you I'd share three tips with you that would make tying the copper john easier to tie? Well, it's time. Tip number one. To help you keep your bias straight on the hook shank, wrap your thread around the bias and hook shanks so that the thread lightly goes over the top of the bias, and then pull the bobbin tight as the thread is wrapped towards you. When done correctly, the bias should sit correctly on the shank. Second, when tying the copper wire abdomen on the copper john, be sure to use flat wraps of thread. You can achieve flat wraps of thread by spinning your thread counterclockwise as it hangs from the hook shank. I feel that the flat wraps help the copper wire abdomen taper up the fly smoother than wound up thread. And tip three, now I know I kind of touched on this when I wrapped the wire abdomen up the hook shank, but I want to add a bit of info to that. As you wrap the wire up the hook shank, Pull the wire back towards the back of the fly and allow the wraps to fall off each other so that they stay butted against each other. Another thing you can do as you wrap the wire up the body is kind of weave it back and forth from the front to the back of the fly like you see here. I have found this also helps keep the wire wraps butted against each other. Wait, I have one more tip. It's pretty generic, but probably the most important for any fly. Practice, practice, practice. The more you attempt to tie the copper john correctly, the better your flies will look and easier the techniques used to tie it will become. And one more thing, boy am I starting to sound like Colombo. Anyway, if you want more demos and tips, please click subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you want to see me tie a bunch of cool nymphs, be sure to check out my nymphs playlist to the right. Or if you want to watch something YouTube pick from my channel, click the video below that. Thanks for watching, and feed your vice, it's hungry.